Hello again. Today we're going to be looking at the XTEC EX540 and the SEM DT9939. You can see I have the XTEC attached to my function generator and I'm currently outputting a sine wave. This is the program that I had written in LabVIEW. Of course it's skinned a little bit different and it has quite a few more features now. And to the left of this, this is the software that XTEC supplies with this meter. And you can see the values of these two programs are actually matching. Again, this is attached to our BB60C Signal Hound Spectrum Analyzer. So what I've done is I've increased the amplitude quite a bit. So this is now outputting plus or minus 10 volts. And we can see our huge spike here. It's over here as well. So if we look at our oscilloscope, we can see it's very smooth. What's actually happening is the meter goes through its range switch. This will be off by a decimal place. And this will happen like right at about 4,000 counts, right there. And again, we can see it on their software. So this isn't a problem with the lab view code. This is actually a problem with the meter. So I thought, well, maybe it's in this XTEC. So let's just turn on the SEM meter instead. Right there you have it. And again, you see it both on the XTEC software and on my LabVIEW software. So I'm going to say that's a bug in their software. And again, of course, we don't see that on our oscilloscope over here. Let's just go ahead and hook in a DC source. So again at 40 volts you can see where the meter is again switching its ranges and once again it's off by a decimal place. So you can see the output voltage there instead of being 40 volts where it should be it's actually putting out about 400 volts. Of course that's not correct that's not really what the meter is seeing. So again that's something you should be aware of if you're going to use this meter to record data. You may remember that I showed some software I found online it was a program that actually interfaced with the USB adapter for the SEM meter. And that's what I started with. It turned out there was a lot of problems with that software and how they were decoding the meter. So I've gone through and I've corrected all that with this software. So you can see I'm in AC volt and DC volt and millivolt. This is in DC. We hit the mode, we go to AC. So I'm just selecting the resistance mode. So again, this will be 0.5 ohms. This will be a 1 ohm and a 50 ohm and a 100 ohm. And a 1K. The way that this is working, you can see I'm displaying K ohms up here, and of course 1.00. And I don't scale this graph right now. I've thought about changing that where it actually is an absolute number, but that's not what I'm doing. So you can see as this thing actually changes the ranges, this would be 1.00K. This would be 10K. 100K, 1 meg, ten meg. This will be diode check mode. So this will be a short and a single diode. Continuity mode. So this will be a one nanofarad and a 0.1 microfarad. You can see I have the meter set for hertz, and we are applying a 200 hertz waveform. Let's just clear the graph out real quick. And again, you can see how we've switched to kilohertz. So instead of going up, we've actually scaled it back down. 
right here again you can see where we roll over at roughly 4,000 Hertz right there seems like something they should have caught and would have been fairly easy to fix on their end again right at 40 kilohertz right there you can see it switch right there 332 kilohertz LabVIEW has a communications library that they offer for free so I've changed the software completely to use that library and it's really cleaned up the program so if we go to demodulate this upper graph is our I and Q data if we zoom in a little bit here we can see the FSK data or our phase shift keying here's the two frequencies so what I've done is I FM demodulate that signal and that is the purple waveform here so with them zoomed in and aligned a little bit closer you can see the higher frequency is a 1, lower frequency is a 0 and right here is our data of course this initial is our preamble so this yellow line this is a phase lock loop that's created in software and I can change the divisor of that and you can see the edges of that line up fairly close You can see on the lower part of the screen, this is the data that the meter is transmitting. This top set of data is the Manchester encoded, and this is after encoding. So the way I'm actually getting the binary data is I'm using this phase lock loop to clock on the rising edge. So what I'll do is I'll run that clock basically two times over. So you'll see I'll get a rising edge at each bit of data. You can see the preamble is a 0, 0, 1, 1. So I got a rising edge here at this 0, 0, 1, 1. And that's giving us our 3, 3. And again, once I run that through our Manchester decoder, so these four AAs are our preamble. This is the data that we're actually interested in, this 0F1020334358. Once I have that clock aligned with the data, I can recreate an eye diagram that's shown here and you can see the side diagram is actually very tight we would expect that uh, this data rates very slow uh, this thing should be dead on it only sends data at like 2400 baud and to the right we have our Fourier data and you can see the two spurs representing our two frequencies from our IQ data this is running a jitter analysis on the digital data and again this is the settings for the signal hound and this is our communication settings so one of the members had asked me how difficult it would be to make a small handheld receiver that didn't require a PC that would talk to the sum meter and I thought you know simple enough project to do so I bought this small transceiver and I had this digital and arty board this thing has a small Xilinx device on it This is about a hundred dollars I think this thing cost about five or so ten dollars so the original plan was to marry this radio up with this card and then hook a display onto this and do some FPGA code to make a small radio transceiver so I want to get started on this and of course this doesn't come with any documentation so I went to the company's website and long and behold even though this thing is advertised as using a CC1101 the part that's actually used on here is an NRF905 so this uh, radio is a little different than what's inside of the XTEC in the SEM meter and one of the problems is going to be the separation this thing is fixed at uh, 50 kilohertz where the SEM meters use uh, 25 kilohertz I looked at the data sheet last night and I don't see any way to reprogram it so unfortunately this little idea was a bust I'd have to get another radio transceiver to make this work but they are available so for those of you interested in writing software to communicate with the SEM meter through LabVIEW I'll go ahead and make that decode program available and I bought this eval board probably close to six months ago or so and I have yet to really do anything with it 
I had downloaded the uh, latest Xilinx tools and installed them and then it turned out that uh, they had stored everything as a tickle file and of course you couldn't feed that into the 2016 version that I downloaded so I was just kind of bored of the project by that point so I never did anything more with it. One of the reasons I bought the board is because it comes with this voucher this will allow you to download essentially the full license so you don't have to use the web pack or anything maybe in the future I'll use this board for something else but I think that's going to be it for this video uh, sorry I couldn't show you how to make a small hand transponder but uh, yeah I probably won't look around for another radio I'd like to take this time to welcome all you new followers if you enjoy seeing meters all tested to some kind of a standard this is a good channel you can see I have these transient generators that I built all the meters are ran across these and typically tested to failure and then document the results in a spreadsheet that you can download for free all the meters are basically tested the same so it does give you some idea how robust the meters front ends are well till the next meter later